Hi, and welcome to season two of Books Are the New Ridge podcast. I am your host, April Sharice, and today I am not only joined by one of the most influential people in my life when it comes to being an author and expanding her branding business, but she's also a very dear and close friend. I have had the pleasure of knowing this sweetheart that... (laughs) I don't know, I guess, well beyond high school. I've had a chance to learn and watch her nurture her business from writing about um, things that she's passionate about and starting the Astria Legends brand, but also getting into cosplay. And I'm new to it, but just to know that um, cosplay can be something more enjoyable than just a hobby. You can actually build a solid business from it and expand. And so today we're joined by Ms. Amanda Rees, also known as the Angelic Empress. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? I'm doing great. That is amazing. So I hope that I have given your intro a little justice. Because I have known you so long, I always feel like I've either skipped a little bit or just not really gone into detail enough because of the history that we have. But I will allow you to um, tell our listeners and our viewers everything about you and what Astria Legends really is. So Astria Legends is a visual and performance arts brand that started as mere novels back in 2000. And from that point, it just expanded into uh, so many more avenues in order to share the story of uh, how other people are important, how everybody is important and everybody has a purpose and the message of never giving up and you can, you can conquer the world, you can change it. Um, it's expanded from novels to comic books, to cosplay, to live performances, mm-hmm. to games. Um, basically whatever I can put my hands into, yeah. I've, I've tried at this point. So um, and, it's, and it's nice to see how much it's blossomed and how it's really started to change lives. So yeah. It's really, really, really good. And that's the thing that I think is so amazing because I'm such a novice. I've always felt like, um, you know, comics or anime or even cosplay was just merely for entertainment. I never really thought beyond that of how much work it goes into goes into it, how much creativity comes with it, and and just how much you really influence other people's lives who may have thought about doing the same thing. So can you talk talk a little bit about what that's like, your journey learning, just how influential you have become in what you do? Well, I have to start with, you know, why, why I started. Um, I grew up, as, as you probably would know, or maybe not know, I grew up with a lot of self-esteem issues. And the turning point for me was I would do all of these different arts and crafts fairs and trying to show my books and my artwork and and in the process of trying to get people to uh, notice you know notice my little table I started kind of dressing up as the characters you know um, anything they to, to make me stand out in, in the crowd and I didn't really think that much of it I was like okay I'm just gonna pull some clothes out of my closet and put a wig on it and kind of do it up And a couple of years ago, I started doing conventions. I did some of my first conventions. And um, I had about five people come up to me and say, are you a cosplayer? And me, I'm like, no, I'm not. Um, I don't make my clothes. I'm not a guest star. You know, I'm not not a cosplayer. And one lady came up to me and she said, she asked me and I said, no. She said, yes, you are. Mm. And you should be. And I was like, okay. I didn't really think anything of it. Uh, I'm at some of the cosplayers that I know to this day that day and towards the end they were doing this big foot photograph of all the cosplayers and, and they all came at me and they're like well you got to be in this picture and I'm like well I'm, I'm kind of at a booth you know I, I was camera shy at the time and and it was like oh no 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 you're you're a cosplayer you, you know you're embodying your character you should you should be in this picture we want you in there and not exactly kicking and screaming, but <laughs> nervous, you know. I, I walk by, I said, well, yeah, okay, I'll go over there and I'll, you know, take a picture and, and it'll be fine. And I get over there and it's about 20 cosplayers and I see 20 people, you know, from professional photographers to people just with their phones out. And I'm just like, I don't think I signed up for this. <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to be here. And, um, you know, we sat there for about 10 minutes and all these pictures and 
I started seeing all these pictures in my feed. Nobody had ever taken a picture of me before this. I had never known what that was like. And I was like, oh my goodness. I see my face everywhere. What is this? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? And it was at that point that I was like, you should take it seriously. Mm. See how, what happened, you should take it seriously. And and it was like, you, you see how many people just really responded to you even though you're doing your own character, they may not have known who you were, but they a lot of people responded to you. Wow. And it was that point of in a year from that point that it took me to learn to love myself, mm. to love how I look in front of the camera, to know, hey, I'm important. And it was in that moment that I realized, you know, just what my brand could do in that same format, you know, showing other people, yeah, you're important too. You have a purpose. And really taking that and really taking it serious and, you know, taking all of that to the next level. So now when I'm, I'm dressed as my characters and I'm cosplaying, it, it has a lot more purpose, has a lot more soul. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more people focused where I'm, I'm looking for those people to change, looking for those people to say, yeah, you know, hey, here I am, but you can do it too. You're important. You know, just spreading that message and. And it's been a really, it's been a really fun journey, really fun journey. I know, I really know. And I just remember <laughs> early on, I, I, I did not know about the self-esteem issues, but I can see it because, you know, just coming of age, you know, you're battling with trying to figure out your place and exactly who you want to be anyway. But from the outside looking in, it always seemed like your creativity um, motivated our cause you to be more driven that any self-esteem issues was second you know took a second seat to your creativity would you say that at that moment once you started seeing your pictures everywhere from um, taking that first picture as a cosplayer is do you think that that is when the self-esteem kicked in and you've been flying ever since or do you think it happened a little bit before then um and that was a turning point like I said it took a year for me to get comfortable in front of the camera <laughs> because doing more convictions like more of can I take a picture with you I'm just like mm -hmm. you know learning how to smile learning you know how to do all that stuff yeah. and you know having having support of a lot of people um, I have two photographers that are really supportive that kind of walk me through the whole picture thing first time yeah um, because I've always, I've always had an attitude of do it anyway yeah that's why a lot of people didn't know because even if I didn't feel like I was worth it or whatever, I was like, well, I'm gonna do it anyway. You know, it doesn't hurt. Um, but now it's more of a, hey, I am worthy. I should do it even more. Yeah. And, you know, learning to love yourself, learning, hey, it's not that bad. Learning that you're important, learning that, you know, you can you can do these things yeah. is, is, is really, big game changer um so now like I said it took a year now I, I'm comfortable with it like I, I've always liked the spotlight don't get me wrong <laughs> I've always loved the spotlight um but now it's such a different feeling when it's one-on-one -on -one and and in, in smaller smaller crowds and and being able to speak in front of people and, yeah. and perform in front of small groups and really just talking to people and and really connecting yeah. it is something that took a while to to develop um and it's 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 changed my life as much as it's changed other people's yeah so take us back on this journey because you got into cosplaying like you say um from writing initially how let the listeners and the viewers know if at all, any skepticism or criticism that you faced, or if it, if you were welcomed with open arms, being a writer and then entering into cosplay, um, just let them know what that process is like, or what they might could face, you know, doing a similar journey. Um, there's always going to be naysayers, <laughs> and I'm not going to go into depth on those because you don't want to give them too much light. Yeah, um, there's always <laughs> going to be that, but you'll find that people are gonna stand by you a lot more than the people that are gonna try and steal your dreams or try and talk you down out of it. And I've had <laughs> every single performance, every single event, every single um, 
connection that I've had with people has always left some type of memory. There's always been some type of story. Um, I will say when you're doing your original stuff, you're not going to be you're not going to be crowded by people wanting to take your picture, of course, as, as as far as somebody that's doing more mainstream. But every, I will guarantee every single experience you do have is going to be something more than somebody mainstream because it's going to be genuine, mm -hmm. it's going to be different, and it's going to leave a lasting memory. Um, I remember, you know, people coming up to me and in all just like I don't know who you are but you're so beautiful I want to know more about you <laughs> and it opens up a place where you can tell your story and you're like okay this is who I am and character and just seeing their eyes light up you know I've <laughs> I've actually been bombarded in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> um, people trying to figure out who I am and um you know who is this girl dressed all in red with big ears kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I've had people look at my artwork and start crying because mm. they, um, they're like, I see myself in, in, in this and, and I understand what you're trying to say. And, and it's really nice when people get it, Yeah. when they get the meaning, when they, when they latch onto it. And it's like, okay, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I may not get a million people coming to me, but it's that one or two that really get it. That yeah. makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Amanda is really kind of being modest about just her approach and just how much growth she has experienced. I have, again, I've been able to witness a lot of things firsthand. And we're talking about a woman who has not only written one story, but she has wrote, written uh, and published two books. She has a collection of comic books. She has characters based off of her, like actual plush toy characters or dolls based off of the characters of her story. I mean, countless conventions, countless festivals. She has choreographed dance pieces to live interpretations of her work. I mean, the list goes on and on. This is someone who is a ball of creativity. And so if you haven't yet, please go and follow her. She is going as Angelic Empress on all of social media platforms. And go to the website, astrolegends.com. It's .com, right? Yes, astrolegends.com. It's a world of knowledge, literally a world of knowledge. And I'll let her talk about what I mean when I say world, but you will be um, just so enriched just by visiting her website and learning a little bit more about Astro Legends. So if you want to take this moment, because <laughs> I kind of just threw it out there and just let them know what I mean when I say world. So, <laughs> so Astro Legends is a place where um, angels are based off of colors and I wanted, because I study colors, I wanted to bring unity into my world. So everything that makes us who we are can be traced back to a color. Mm -hmm. So having these color-based angels and the whole rainbow represented um, that unity. And these are angels that are learning to work together, learning that our colors don't get along, but it's, it's our differences and our diversity that, that's gonna make us overcome these things. And then on the opposite side, they're fighting the living representations of things that everybody struggles with, you know, from doubt to fear, to depression, to anxiety, all those things are living, breathing beings in my world. Mm -hmm. And you see these characters that represent who we are, fighting the things that we struggle with as a way to say, yeah, if they can be it, you can too. And it's showing people how, how these, these sins, they work. How, how does that work? How does worry work? What do they do to try and get in our heads and get in our minds? And it's it's a way to not only show people that they can conquer it, but show other people how to recognize it. Because a lot of times when you see people that are depressed or you see people going through anxiety, a lot of people either don't recognize it or they don't know what to do. Yeah. They just, you know, then they kind of kind of brush it off. And what I want to do with these stories and, and my live events and all the things that I do is just showing people this is how you can spot it. This is how you can conquer it. This is, this is how it works. And yeah. just helping other people uh, understand it a little bit better. So 
the world comes together and so you have all these colorful spectrums of um, what I call worlds of cliches because I can do that <laughs> <laughs> and you see um, you see all these different characters they're all different colors they're all different animals they're they're all these diverse uh, representations you know abstractly of course uh, and they just represent all these different um, positive traits and, and, and positive messages. Um, I have one that's, uh, she's black and white, and she represents balance and unity mm. and equality. And so she's fighting with a lot of doubt, you know, people who don't think they're worth it or, yeah. or they let that doubt, you know, break their dreams. And I'm like, well, no, you're worthy just as anybody else is. And what's her name, that character's name? That's Dalmatine. <laughs> Um, so they, they're all named after the colors that they are. So that's after them, the Dalmatine stone. Um, so, it, and it's a lot of fun to bring these characters together. And I've actually taken it to the next level and created a, a community that mm-hmm. um, each and every person in that community has their own character that I build for them specifically and then whatever they're struggling with becomes that character's adversary and I do stories with them I do events with them so they see that character grow they can see their strength in that character and when they see that character that's them fighting the things that they personally struggle with it's a whole different level because, you know, we watch a lot of movies and we can relate to different characters and we watch different characters, but when that character is based specifically for you, that's a whole different, it, 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 a whole different level. Yeah. And just watching them relate to their characters and watching them grow and just rooting for them. Yeah. It, it's, it, there's no other feeling like it. It's just so, it's rewarding. It's so rewarding. And because you mentioned community, one of the the things that I thought was so amazing in learning about your community is that you have this uh, Patreon created where once you join, um, they can have a character based off Mm -hmm. their likeness, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Lev, definitely tell us about that a little bit more. I'm sure somebody is listening, (laughs) wanting to have this done because how cool is that, right? Yeah, so um, anybody that joins at $5 and up, I will create a character based on your favorite color, your favorite animals, things like that. I'll put them together for you. Um, you receive you receive artwork every month anyway, mm-hmm. but you also receive um, special community extra gifts. Um, like I'm doing um, magnet versions of paper dolls that people can like put their their character on the wall that can see it every day and just kind of give them that uh, reminder that they exist. Um, You have the ability to voice your characters if you so choose um, and stories that I write, little um, visual novels that I write, kind of telling stories that that involve the community characters so they can see their characters grow and and fight these different things. Um, There's so much. I do doodle streams, I doodle their characters, um, I just watch. And then they they have the ability to influence yeah. new things. Through those conversations, I've done new creatures in my world because, you know, they brought it up, well, what if, what if one was blue, you know, I want to see a pink one of this one, and I'm like, yeah. okay, you know what, I, I probably can do that. And um, just watching them really get into the culture behind their characters and really learning learning a lot about the world Mm -hmm. and and taking the characters and running with it and that's what I want I want to see people take the characters and run with it yeah Um, and and that's really what the patron is about it it used to be about a lot of the monthly art and, and things like that that's still there but it's grown more into you know this community this live uh storytelling and this live Role playing and, and involvement yeah. and that I wouldn't trade for the world. So yes, I definitely encourage anybody out there that that you know that likes anime, that likes role play, that likes uh, they're geeky, 
because anyway, <laughs> I'm a nerd. Um, yeah, that, that's totally something that, that you can do. I have 28. So far, 28. That's pretty cool. In there. And, and always looking for more. And when I say she creates this, I mean, she is literally pen to paper hand drawing this out for you. It's not passed on to someone else. She is actually sitting there um, going through the illustrations and trying to really personalize this character for you. And if you want to see it in real life, she has, like she mentioned, a live stream on Thursdays, correct? Mm -hmm. At Thursdays a and Saturdays. Okay. And tell them the times. Uh, they start at 8 p.m. Central from 8 to 11 uh, every Thursday and Saturday yeah so you're going to want to tune into that trust me it's really oh, interesting to see <laughs> to see things like that play out but while we're still talking about all of the different things you've grown into let's talk about marketing um, because that's a big topic for a lot of people um, whether they're in business or they just want to have their character that you create for them um, they want to grow it into a brand themselves or something like that so let's just talk about marketing and um, what that looked like for you throughout your journey biggest thing biggest tip I can give is is learn how to talk about your brand talk about your business no matter who you're talking to yeah. not in a pushy salesperson type of way, but find ways to bring up the fact that you do these things. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned that being able to kind of slide it in conversations has helped a lot because people are like, oh, you really do that, you know, tell me more. You don't have to say a whole lot, um, but it, it's a skill of, you know, finding that way of, of sliding it into conversations, you know, they say, well, what are you going to do today? Well, you know, I have, you know, I'm working on this artwork over here, or, you know, what are you doing Saturday night? Oh, I'm working on, you find little ways to kind of slide it in without being pushy, without being salesperson-y, and you'll find that people really open up, and you're like, oh, you know, tell me, tell me about that. Um, I, I was talking to, I was in my safety deposit box, and the lady at the bank, and I, you know, I took it all out because I was, you know, moving it. And I was like, is it bad that most of the stuff in here is, is my copyright it's for my artwork? And she's like, oh, you do artwork? And I'm like, you, you find little, you know, little ways. It, I mean, it was true, you know. Um, you find little ways to kind of slide in the conversations. And, and that's helped a lot because word of mouth. Yeah. Um, other things would be, you know, find local events. People are surprised that I didn't do conventions starting out. Yeah. There's so many little, you know, little arts and crafts festivals. There's little, you know, little churches, you know, host them, um, different little places. And they're not very big. They're really small. But getting into the local community and, and it is really important, no matter what your business is. Just go to the table. Just sit there and talk to the people that are in your neighborhood. It's, it's a good opportunity to do that. And you'll find that people remember you. Yeah. After a while, people will see you at all these different places because they're they're local, they're the community. So they'll see you at multiple places and they'll start remembering you. Yeah. And um, don't get discouraged. Yeah, exactly. Uh, most places you have to go there a couple of times because if you're new, people weren't expecting to see you. So they might not, you know, buy anything or really talk to you but you're there for a couple of times now they know that you're there yeah then you start getting the people you and you start getting more connections you know um, talking to more people and people remember you so you know don't get discouraged don't knock an event because nothing happened the first time go there a couple of times and really you know don't go there so much to sell go there more to connect to show yeah. yourself to to expose yourself and and the sales will come yeah, because I like that you said that. I think a lot of people, especially in this age of social media, they feel like they have to conquer the world or they have to just let all the masses know about what they have going on. And that's really great. But you have successfully built a, a solid fan, fan base, a foundation, I should say, by doing the local markets. Can you tell them what it's like to be a one woman show um, setting up and going through that process at the local craft fair or conventions and festivals? You get your exercise <laughs> <laughs> and, and you learn how uh, how many things to breathe that you, that you can actually handle. 
um uh, <laughs> that that's one of the biggest things you learn and you learn just how much a little bitty car can hold um <laughs> <laughs> but you also find that a lot of places are really willing to help mm. um a lot of the ones that i do multiple times have been ones where staff will just they'll see somebody that's just by themselves like oh yeah let me help they'll bring out their dollies and all this other stuff and you know really help you uh, uh pack and, and everything and, and it's really nice um so as a one woman you can do it you just can't do it <laughs> on a grand scale yeah but don't discount what you can do um don't be afraid to just don't be afraid to sell out so you yeah. don't have to bring like the whole inventory. Yeah. <laughs> just, just set yourself a little bit and say, it's okay, you know, sell that is a good thing. That means you have a reason to come back the next time. You don't have to bring your whole inventory. Um, but uh, that, that's that's funny. And then and then a lot of time management, of course, when you're when you're doing everything, when you when you're the admin and you're the creator as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, it's a lot about time management and, and really your planner is your friend. <laughs> I bet because I can't live without my calendar on my phone. I'm super forgetful. But you know, as entrepreneurs, right, and creatives, you have so many things running in your head that sometimes you're going to forget. So you're right. Keeping that planner or an agenda or a notification on your phone is going to be key when you're, you know, stepping out. It is always a notebook because I have one always next to me <laughs> <laughs> to jot things down. <laughs> Do not trust your memory. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some things you're doing on social media like I have witnessed that um, you began to use um, Instagram lives or you know just putting out some real content so just take the listeners and viewers on a journey um, as to what you started doing when you initially got on social media and how that has changed or grown to what you're doing now when I first started I was supposed to say anything anytime <laughs> whatever I had <laughs> um then I started saying well this isn't gonna work yeah and and started building a schedule I say okay you know you, you read things and they say well you have to post seven eight nine ten times a day and I'm like no this is not gonna work yeah um so you you find a schedule that works for you so I said well if I at least post three times a week we'll start with that yeah um and then I actually hired a company to help me with my social media just kind of giving me some tips for, yeah. for a bit and they they kind of show me the different um layouts that you can do and how to make it kind of more cohesive and you know it was a challenge because I'm like now I have to find three things that actually look alike <laughs> that's not <laughs> always easy um but it was a nice little challenge and now when you look at especially my Instagram feed you can see some places where there there's um messages going across and there's you know different things that you can pick up as a as a whole versus you know you know one little picture and um I recently took my cosplay and my art and put them together all in their trilogies um and uh, my angelic empress instead of having them separate and I found out that it works better people like to see the art and the cosplay um, and then I used my Astro Legends Instagram for the community. Yeah, I turned it to them. And so all of the doodles that I'm doing for them, all the little nuances that they've had, I'm putting on that. Instagram. I'm like, this is yours. You know, this is for the things that you're doing and just bringing that to light. So they have this um, social media that's <laughs> by a company yeah. that's showcasing the stuff that they're doing and yeah. I think that makes a, a really big difference um, because you don't see any companies doing that and you know I want to do things that you really don't see people doing yeah exactly and now you might because I gave everybody my secret no <laughs> <laughs> but you but, know there um, are two strong takeaways that from what you shared so far that I think it's just worth pointing out it's that one don't be afraid of trial and error right because social media is this you know, machine that you're not going to figure out. And because you don't see any likes or you're not seeing any engagement, don't give up. 
because sometimes it's, uh, well, a lot of times it's trial and error, like Amanda shared, you know, she learned throughout her journey to, you know, why am I having two separate accounts? I can merge my cosplay and my art together. And I'm seeing a whole lot more traction and a lot more engagement from doing that. So trial and error is going to be key. So don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, you shared with us, that I think is key that I totally stand behind is that you enlisted the help of a company or so maybe it's a person that can handle some of the things that maybe you don't have the time to do or it's not your strong point. So bringing in that social media company to walk you through um, and give you some tips that would be, you know, help make your page a, a success. It was well worth a worthwhile investment. And so that's the other thing that I want people to realize is that sometimes if you can find the funding um, try to find one thing that you can delegate just to get that off your table and let them run it as a success while you handle everything else. So those are some really great takeaways. And even if you can't like get them to do it all the time. Um, when I, when I got this, I told them, I said, this is going to be for three months. And I want, what I want you to do is figure out what works and make it in a way that I can do it when, when mm -hmm. you're not there. And they were really open to that. I, I don't know if they get that a lot, yeah. but it was like, you know, I want to be able to take this and just do it on my own. Cause I, I like putting things together and I like scheduling it out. Um, so that's what they did. They gave me these tips and I still have a lot of their ideas that I haven't even used yet. And I, you yeah. know, I kept that log and I'm pretty sure they're still monitoring, <laughs> monitoring <laughs> my stuff cause they're still in there. But um, they did, they, they gave me these tips and these, the structure that I could take and do it my own. Yeah. Uh, so if you don't have the the means to do it, to delegate it forever, you know, still take, you know, say I'm, I'm gonna do it for a couple of months. See see what they tell you to do and take that and and mold it into your process. Yeah. Because um, that's that's a big thing. You know, you always always learning. Always yeah. learning. Exactly. Definitely. And take those little things. You don't have to take everything take what works, take what you like, and mold it into your process and make it your own. Yeah. So this is the question everybody wants to know, definitely myself, that is what's next? It seemed like you have tapped into everything. And I know, you know <laughs> there's so much more you want to do with it. So Leah, let us know what's next. What's on your plate and what's some things we can expect from you? So... <laughs> I am <laughs> like, where do I start? Yeah. Um, so well, I guess for cosplay, I am going to be working on some videos now. I want to get back into spoken word, which was my live performances. And I don't have any of that on really good video. I yeah. don't. So I want to start putting those, um, those, those poetry on videos and um, doing kind of a music video version of them yeah. and, and in cosplay and putting those up. So I'm working on that. Hopefully I'll start on that this weekend <laughs> to have an extra day off. Um, also, we have a trading card game in the works that's in play test phase. So that's the furthest I've ever gotten with this before. So I'm really excited <laughs> about that. Um, I have a partner now and we're working on a video game so bringing it to video game that's that's gonna be super cool i feel bad because they're working on it a lot more than i am so i need to get that going <laughs> that too. Um, when you when you're one woman you, you kind of get your hand in a lot of different parts and it's like okay you gotta actually finish some of right. these things <laughs> um so those are the three main things i have on the oh is it the 17th when is the 17th I need to see what day it is. It's a Saturday. I know that. Like yeah, two weekends on Saturday. It's <laughs> my next <laughs> big event. Okay. Um, I do every other month. I do what's called Astro Unleashed. Okay. On my Twitch live stream, it is a big event. It's it's my version of kind of like a direct. So you you get the sneak peeks into the projects. Mm. Um, I give, you know, any reveals of new characters in the community. Um, I highlight things that have happened there. It, it's really a look back on the last two months yeah. and then where are we going? And I also premiere some type of video. Okay. Um, either it's uh, the next 
installment of the club story mm -hmm. or it could be we premiered the uh, chromosphere which is the uh, comic series the motion comic version of that i premiered the um, trailers for the cosplay videos that i'm trying to do all kind of things so um, that's like the biggest event that I have going, especially virtually. Yeah. Uh, and and that's because we're going to be starting a Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. Oh, I am inducting my first Hall of Fame person. Yeah. So anybody listened then nobody knew that. So I just gave a big spoiler because I had told <laughs> And we got the yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're starting Astro Legends Hall of Fame. So that's going to be really amazing. So things like that. So. That's pretty cool. And so they'll be able to keep up with all of these new developments and updates on the website? Yes. Okay. Yes. And again, that's astrialegends.com. Don't forget it because <laughs> we've some amazing things coming up. I always ask this question since we started last year doing COVID um, because it was such a... Um, a positive and a negative, right? We, we mm -hmm. the first time, had to endure circumstances that no one ever imagined. However, the show must go on, like they always say. So just let everyone know uh, what that was like as an entrepreneur and creative, having to find or pivot your brand to continue to have engagement and, and get the sales that you wanted uh, while we're shut down or on lockdown. <laughs> I think the only thing I couldn't go, to, of course I couldn't go to conventions, but um being an introvert myself <laughs> i was already in the virtual community um i had already started the patreon i already started the community and it was a time for me to step back you know let's focus on that a little bit more let's prepare a little bit more yeah. um in that time i was able to uh i gained some new members i was able to go back and and catch up on on all of the the art and the things that I had promised them that I hadn't gotten the chance to get to yeah, uh, and really connect with them on another level. So we were already doing Twitch live streams. Um, we were already doing uh, the virtual um, rewards and things like that. So in that, in that respect, it wasn't really much of a pivot, but it was more of, you know what, everything shut down this is the perfect time to prepare yeah. for when everything else was up again so it was a really big preparation period I finally got my office space clean mostly <laughs> <laughs> got to organize you know um and and just just prepare uh so now that things are opening back up it's like okay you know what I've already I already prepared for this I already know where I want to go and 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 I feel like I'm ready yeah. Um, so it was, it was a good thing because we, we go and go and go and go and go. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it, we need that. Okay. Stop and yeah. rest and recuperate and prepare and, and just take that breather because right. we don't, we don't really take it. We don't really think about it. We just, run wild I guess right right just chasing the next <laughs> thing because you know society makes us feel like you know you're only as good as your last success and so you know it becomes an addiction to like a drug and in, in some ways so you're right we needed to slow down to assess life and assess relationships and how we were living so you're so correct with that being said where are you finding happiness these days I find happiness, you know, with those closest to me, you know, people like you, because we've known each other forever. Right. And, you know, it, and, and that matters a lot because um, we can get discouraged so easily. And it's, it's so important to have people that really support you, that you can depend on. And yeah. I, I've depended on you so much all the time. Um, and like I said, my community is very, very supportive. I can go in there and be like, hey, look, I can't do this tonight. We're going to do it tomorrow. And they're just like, oh, don't worry about it. You need your rest. You know, they understand. Um, th that's that's really a lot of where I find happiness, just the people that are around me. Yeah. Uh, you surround yourself with with positive people, with people that are going to make you grow, people that are growing themselves because yeah. you want to have people that you can encourage as much as they're encouraging you. And that's a lot of my happiness these days, just, just the people that care. 
That is awesome. That's awesome. And those are some gems to really carry with you for the rest of the year and the rest of your life. You know, sometimes happiness isn't going to be in a Porsche, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> to help. No. I don't. <laughs> So that those are wise words um, spoken right there. While we're wrapping up, you know, just share with us if, if by chance there is a little Amanda listening who is contemplating, am I good enough? Is my creativity as good as I think it is? And will I be accepted? Can you leave some words with um, someone like that? Don't worry about any of that. Just go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, take, take that, you know, do it anyway. Yeah. Um, you'll find that when you're out there, once you try, don't worry about making a mistake. Don't worry about what the people are going to think. If it's something that you want to do for you and it makes you happy and it's not hurting anybody else and, yeah. you know, it's, it's your drive, then go do it. Yeah. You will find that more people are going to be for you doing it than against you. You're always going to have the naysayers. They're always going to be there but you'll find there's going to be a lot more people for you than the naysayers. And you never know until you try. You never know until you try. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, I really have to thank you because you are a busy woman for taking time, you know, and, and we've taken up a good bit of your time today. So really thank you for um, joining us, allowing our listeners and our viewers to really learn about your history, but also how they can go forward if this is something that they're interested in. So I salute you. I love all the amazing things that you're doing. And again, thank you. You can find and connect with Amanda again on all social media platforms as Angelic Empress. Um, we spoke about this several times, but the website is www.astrialegends.com. It is going to be so worth you going to read more, interact, engage, and become a member of the community. Um, it's, it's an amazing experience. I have to be honest. I really love it. So thank you again for tuning in and all the details will be in the description box below. So thank you guys until next week.